John, thanks very much. The rising water has folks who run businesses along the Ohio and Little Miami and others watching nervously. They're expecting the worst, of course. Local 12's Jeff Hurst joins us live from California, Ohio, with the impact so far. And you can see it moving up, can't you? Yeah, it, it's, it's not a fun sensation for people who work out here. This is Kellogg and Sutton. It's closed. It always closes out here when it rains. But I want to show you something. Take a look at that pole there it looks like a gaffer's tape and a bag a garbage bag well under that is the mechanism which controls the traffic lights the traffic lights are out here because they took the mechanism out they're worried that if the flood waters get that high and boy that would be high if the flood waters get that high the mechanism would short out and be ruined so they've taken it out so the traffic lights are out but you know there's road closed signs over here so that's something they're concerned about another concern people who work at the Peddler's Flea Market just down on Kellogg, not far from here. If it's possible to have a sense of the biblical at a flea market, today was the day. We're getting preparing for the flood. The expectation is that what can be seen out the back door will soon be coming in the back door. And so flea market vendors were taking out their stuff for higher ground. This place has been flooded before in 2011 and 2018. 56 feet. Now they're bringing inside. Last time it was 60 feet. We had five foot of water in here. And I lost about 50% of my stuff. So I'm trying to move stuff out of here in advance and hope for the best. As you can see, some of the vendors have put their things up on high shelves. And the hope is, you know, the water won't get that high because if it gets that high, we all have problems. On the other hand, even if it doesn't get that high and it eventually goes back down, then you're going to have a coating of mud on the floor. It's going to smell. There could be sewage. So even, uh, you know, a high location is not necessarily uh, safe. Which was the case last year here. So what was that like? Three months, zombie. No sleep. You dream about the flood or garbage or <laughs> and it cost maybe twenty thousand dollars just to take the garbage out. When was that? Do you remember? One year ago. Oh, just one year. Okay. February eighteenth, two thousand. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Flea market vendors are used to moving the itinerant peddler in American history, but this history repeating itself is not fun. Frustrating, right? Yes, it is. This is the third time. You know, it's getting old. <laughs> it's getting expensive. Now, one thing the flea market manager pointed out, in addition to worrying about the water, she's worried about the possibility of a government shutdown on February 15th. Because if that happens, she's afraid that the, the mapping that you can see, the federal government mapping of floodwaters will disappear. And she's also concerned what might happen to FEMA, the emergency agency, and what that could mean for her insurance. So separate from just watching the water come up, she may be watching the government go down. Live uh, right near Coney Island, Jeff Hirsch, Local 12 News. Back to you. Jeff, thanks very much. Flood gates are up tonight along Maring Way in Cincinnati and at the foot of Madison Avenue in Covington. Newport Public Works crews will put up flood gates tomorrow.